I'm here with Patrick Gruber, CEO of Gevo, ticker symbol G-E-V-O. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, it's nice to talk to you. A um, lot to get into here. But first, can you give us just an overview of what Gevo is and what you do? Sure. We're a company that's developing hydrocarbon fuels made from renewable resources. Now, what's interesting about these is that we can make them cost competitive with jet fuel from oil and still abate all the carbon that goes with it. So it's not this idea of it's one or the other. No, we can do both. But it's and it's done creatively by taking renewable resource based carbon, CO2 in the atmosphere, and converting it through a combination of biotechnology, fermentation technology, plus chemistry to make it into a drop in jet fuel. And of course, no one's going to fly a plane unless it truly is a drop in. It better be the same. It's yeah. kerosene. And so that's what has to happen. And that's what we work on. Yeah. Are you so sort of pioneering this? We are. We're pioneers. We've been the leaders of this. We've been operating and doing this since uh, I came to Jivo for this purpose, uh, sponsored by Virgin Green Fund, Richard Branson's fund, and uh, Benel Kosla back in 2007 with the express purpose of doing what's called alcohol to hydrocarbons, alcohol to jet. And uh, we've been working on it ever since. And now I think the market conditions are right where we can actually get this thing commercialized mm -hmm. because people are starting to really understand more about what carbon value might be, what the production costs would be. I think that there's all this in the past. There's always oh, food versus fuel. No, there's not. That's not a real thing. Mm -hmm. That's fake. That's not a real thing. And so all those things are going to the, to the wayside and now economics will rule. Now we got to get our, our big thing is get projects financed. So how do you live? We're kind of an unusual company in that we're a developer. So we have all kinds of technology. We got 450 patents and we got huge portfolio. Well, okay. That'll capture value. We, so we, we have, uh, we're in that we're developing a project in like Preston, South Dakota that would produce 60 million gallons of ethanol. This one has a DOE loan guarantee with it that would fund 1.63 billion. The project itself is going to cost 2.5 billion, mm -hmm. right? For 60 million gallons. It, it produced 60 million gallons of jet fuel plus about 1.3 billion pounds of protein and animal feed. So it's, it's a big yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. right? Then we also just bought a, um, uh, we have another site that we're developing up in North Dakota. We just bought an ethanol plant there and it has 67 million gallons of ethanol. It's a very well-run plant, but it has an unusual thing in that it has a sequestration site right there mm -hmm. with a million tons of capacity where you're currently capturing from ethanol fermentation about 160,000 tons a year and putting it down the hole. And so it's only, there's only three of these in the country. We have one. Yeah. And so that creates an advantage because we can expand that site and that's profitable or will be profit, I mean, uh, improve our profitability as a company. Absolutely. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, if people, you know, look up things that could see, you know, net losses recorded, how do you kind of explain that? And then what's the plan to recover from Yeah, that? yeah, sure. So the uh, net loss, we're, so we've been investor, developer in technologies and project development. So that's a lot of what our money has been spent on is perfecting the technologies, making sure they work, getting the project developed so we can deploy it, satisfying all the DOE requirements. That was Seriously expensive. So to do a to the typical rule of thumb for commercialization, building a plant, is that about 10 to 15 percent of the capital cost is related to what's called feed, the front end engineering. Okay, if we have a two and a half billion dollar plant, you'd expect us to spend about 200 plus 200, 250 million dollars mm -hmm. of feed. Well, that's what we have to do. So we have so many companies out here talking, we're gonna do SAF or jet fuel, SAF which by the way, has been renamed as synthetic aviation mm -hmm. fuel from sustainable aviation mm -hmm. fuel under the Trump administration, which is good. Mm -hmm. So it's still in yeah. it's cool. And then, uh, and it creates this new opportunity. Awesome. But all these, where are they going to, we had that, like, we already spent it. So we're on the, we're near the end of that development phase. Now we deploy it, finance it, get on with it. And then we can copy paste to do other sites. And so this plant that we just bought up in North Dakota is interesting because it's a profitable ethanol plant that, I have in the CCS site de-risk things. And so we'll, we plan on building a 30 million gallon plant up there. So we'll do that in parallel. And I don't know which one's going to get there first. I don't, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. And there seems to be investors who want to do it. And, and it's about, then the question is, who is the customer really? Because think about it. Our jet fuel is just drop in jet fuel. It's the same. Same. Yeah. So then who is it that's going to, who wants this, who wants this new stuff and why? It's about carbon. Well, those are the people downstream mm -hmm. of the airlines. Mm -hmm. 
we're kind of looking forward if you're speaking to investors, right? What do you, where's the growth trajectory and looking the next couple of years? Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. So we're unusual in that we've already uh, spent the bulk of our money, uh, the bulk of money that we had to spend to get things developed. So we're in the midst of project financing and it's a project level financing, not a GIVO level. We have a 270 or 80 million bucks of cash. So we're, we're, you don't need to raise money anytime. Mm -hmm. We don't have, we don't need to, we're good. And then uh, we have a, uh, we'll have to raise at the project level and we're a developer. So we would treat it, do it like a developer. We'll take an equity position in the project and we'll get paid for that. We'll run the plants and things like that, but it's, we're a developer, right? We're not going to spend, raise more money and go spend it all. Mm -hmm. This is other people say they want to invest. Let's go test that. And then uh, we also are, uh, have an RNG business that is about 400,000 million BTUs, which is a big RNG plant from dairy manure. Mm. So we're making, and I thought we're, the reason I have it is I thought we we're going to need it to feed to the jet plant to lower the footprint. Well, it turns out we figured out how to do it without taking that in. So now we just sell it to California. Yeah. So what'll happen in this year, it's going to be an interesting year for us because people misunderstand and think, well, like I said, 45 Z's. Well, let's talk about revenue. How do you get, I guess in the, today we'll sell ethanol right? Because we have an ethanol plant in, mm -hmm. in North Dakota. Okay. We get, that should make, call it somewhere between 10 and $30 million. Who knows? It's ethanol. Yeah. It'll be somewhere in there. Yeah. We're going to sell the 45 Z credits. Now this is so surprise people because they think, well, people, the analysts talk widely about oh, 45 Z is not finalized. I got news. Yeah, it is enough so we can sell them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that. I think people will be shocked when they see that happen because how did that, what, what that's not supposed to happen and that's good for three years right because that yeah. that's a law it has to be followed yeah. and i think it probably will get extended too because it's 45z is the federal credit under the ira bill there's a lot of support bipartisan support even from the conservative republicans about that yeah. because it's good for developing jobs in the economy so it's a uh, i think it has good traction there yeah and then so that adds money and then you think about okay for rng we just got our california pathway approved so finally, after two years of waiting around, it was supposed to take three months, took two years. Great. That is another $15 million we can add between our RNG business. So we should be able to wipe out our burn and become EBITDA neutral or positive this year. And actually, and if, and if we get more deals progress, we might even be quite positive for EBITDA. So that's considering a burn rate of about probably about $45 million-ish or so uh, developing technology. And the projects and always spend a lot of money on lobbying, making sure that, you know, our, we're not one of those things that should be tossed. You know, yeah. our, our so plant, like we're talking about Lake Preston, South Dakota, mm -hmm. the economic impact is huge. So you do, do this plant, it creates, you know, 100 direct jobs, 700 indirect jobs right in that region, it, right? Mm -hmm. It's $110 million a year annually would be generated outside of us just around us because of what we're doing for economic development. This huge payback. Charles Rivers Associates did a study on asking the question, well, for this tax credit of 45Z, what happens? For every dollar of tax credit, it generates about $6 back to the treasury because of all the economic flow. Yeah. And it creates hundreds of jobs. It's a, it takes over a thousand people for three years to build the dang thing. <laughs> yeah. These are big plants. Yeah. So this is a huge economic thing. And now think about all the ethanol plants in the country and what's happening. They're in overcapacity. Well, I know how to suck up that capacity. It's, and I know how to meet the demand for jet fuel in the future. Mm -hmm. So think about that. It's not one or the other. We can abate carbon. Oh, and it's cost competitive yeah. on a net net basis. So that makes, free dungeon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and telling me all about your company. Yeah, you bet. Pleasure. <laughs>